coming from the last video, I want to talk about something that I feel like people have a very backwards perspective about. Rather, I saw this article. Well, it's not really an article. I found the article, but I saw it from this uh, picture here where it talks about how Japanese researchers have developed a technique to erase traumatic memory safely without damaging the brain. I'll leave the article in the description if I'm not lazy. And off the jump, you may be like, wow, this sounds perfect. I could, all the bad things that happened in my life, I could just erase from my brain. Look, Everyone watching or listening to this video has experienced tragedy before, correct? Your misfortunes, you've had terrible experiences, and or maybe you're going through a rough time period right now in your life. And oftentimes, we think about it in a way where we want to just like reverse it almost or escape it. Ah, I wish I never went through this. Ah, I, I regret this. I should have never spoke to this person, da, 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 all this stuff, right? I don't agree with that. And this goes to the last video and the Japanese racist thing I mentioned. Sorry, my phone, my phone went off. Let me just, hey, one take, whatever. If you erased and reversed some of the experiences you went through, you would not be who you are today. You gain wisdom through, th through tragedy. When bad things happen to you, you should be hopefully more wise after. And let me explain something about this from a neuroscientific level. Did you know your brain essentially carves like carving into wood almost, not physically, I'm speaking in reference, metaphorically, your brain carves neural connections based on experiences you go through. The term is neuroplasticity. Every time you learn a skill, you endure stress, you do anything, it triggers changes in your neural circuits. And when this repeated activation or trigger happens, that carved part, metaphorically, gets deeper and deeper and deeper. This is why if you practice playing an instrument or practice any sort of skill set, you naturally get better and fluent at it. This is how you learn things. Trauma does the same thing because let me tell you, traumatic experiences amplify this process of carving because it involves intense emotional and survival responses. When you're going through a tragedy or a stressful situation, your brain is ramping up that carving which is why tragedy hurts so much. Why it's so hard to get rid of. Why what someone did or said to you or a bad thing that happened to you, it's hard to get, to get it out of your memory. It was carving like crazy, but that doesn't apply to you learning an instrument because as I said, intense emotional and survival responses make this stronger. This is why people, and I'm sure we can all relate to this. This is why when you talk to somebody, when you meet somebody new or let's say, you meet a girl or a guy, right? And let's say you got something, a little track or whatever, right? And you learn about their past and you realize they've been hurt by somebody in the past or multiple people. For that exact reason, they think you're gonna do the same thing that their ex did to them. They or you, because you might be that person who I'm referring to here where you know so your ex hurt you or something and now you think everybody's like this, right? And it's even subconscious. You or they might miss out on dating a good woman or a good man because your brain is all carved out from your past experiences. And because of your or their natural pathways being molded like this, it affects their or it affects your emotional regulation and your empathy. This is why people who experience childhood trauma, they struggle with their empathy. This is why I say in videos, the first and most important thing you need to do when raising a child, it's teach them empathy. How would you feel if what, however you're acting is, is on the opposite side? Hey, if you're doing X, Y, Z, you're disturbing this person, etc. Hey, don't do that because it may create this effect that isn't favorable to others. Try not to be so angry or throw a fit all the time when you don't get what you want because it makes other people unhappy. People go through terrible experiences and they need to rebuild their circuits. And when they do or are in the process of doing so, that's where wisdom comes from. That's where empathy and compassion comes from. If you never resolve your past or come to terms with it, you'll never grow. And this isn't something that just pop. It's just, you know, why I do pop? That's not even the right sound. Snap, right? If you just snap your fingers, it's not just going to like disappear. Like, oh, I, I come to terms with it. It doesn't work that way. It's like, it takes days, it takes months, it could even take years. That's why I feel like when people wish certain things didn't happen in the past that hurt them, I don't agree with thinking that way. Because what it tells me is that 
You either didn't learn from the situation because you're too caught up on what this person did to you or what happened to you. You didn't learn from it, really. You're just mad at this point. Or again, you claim you did, but if you learned from something, you wouldn't be holding on to it like this or let it affect you that much. It's a learning experience. I I came to terms with it. If you came to terms with it and you learn from it, let's move on. Now, here's my counter argument to my argument where I feel like with like the Japanese research thingy about removing traumatic memories, right? Some traumatic experiences, if you went through therapy, hypnotherapy, group therapy, and everything under the sun to deal with your problems, and it cannot be resolved, and let's just say it's affecting your life every day or your relationships that badly, then yes, I think I would not be against completely erasing a traumatic memory or experience from someone's mind. Some people are too damaged, way too damaged, but a lot of people aren't good judges of that. I look, look, and I mentioned this last video, but I'm mentioning this here too. With in this case, we're like, I used to be very hurt about something that my ex did to me years ago, right? I thought I would never get over it. Like, wow, I can't believe she did that. Blah blah blah. blah. It took me a few years, but I don't even think about it anymore. Like, but I thought at that time period when it would bother me so much, I would think about it like every day or maybe like every other day or something like that. I thought it would be with me until the end of my life. I wasn't a good judge of this because when we're dealing with a tough past memory, we act like it's the end of the world for us because it's our, it's, it's our problem, right? When I finally decided to come to terms with it, that's when I finally got over it. When I finally decided to therapy it, that's when I really got over it. I did something about it. And oftentimes we don't do anything about our past problems. We just let it, it just stays in our mind. You know what I'm saying? Like oftentimes we don't try to find resolve with our past. Some people, they, they're too busy. They want revenge all the time. Some people, they want revenge. Some people, they just, you know, they, they I don't know. They, they, they just, it's almost like attached to their personality. You get what I'm saying? We just let it live inside of us and remind us randomly. And to wrap this up, this is why I meant last video about tough times don't mean give up because when you give up, you make everything worse. You have to do the inner work. If you don't want to work or get help, then what are we supposed to do for you? What are you supposed to do for yourself? You're just repeatedly carving in that same spot in your brain over and over and over again. It's like, maybe this might not be the best. It's like a river, right? The, the river gets deeper and deeper over time, or maybe it may not, whatever. You get what I'm saying? Like It's like it's like that. Who, who knows how much work and time it will take for that river to ever fill up and stop flowing the water down? And some people, they let that river get so deep and they don't want to do anything about it. Then such is life to them. But there are people with traumatic experiences that cause that carving to be so deep to the point where it's like, you can't even restore it. You know, it's like, damn man, that hole is going to be there forever. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only time I wish something like that could be done here where we could erase memories or traumatic experience. Right. But those experiences that I'm talking about where that would be the case are very specific. In my opinion, some girl or some guy breaking your heart is not an example of this. You going broke is not an example of this. You flunking in school is not an example of this. You getting rejected is not an example of this. It's not the end of the world. People be acting like that. Y'all be acting like that deep carving. Oh, man, she broke my heart. The girl I crushed on for years, she's like, bro, it's not the end of the world, okay? Like, you may be mad, you may feel a way, but if you don't come to terms, that all right, then, all right, keep letting that affect you, bro. Like, that, that's your misery at this point. That's your misery. You keep treating it like it's the end of the world. You're carving things deep and deep and deep and deeper into your brain. And now it's going to be harder to get out of it. Metaphorically speaking, of course, when I say carving and deep in your brain, you know what I'm saying? But that's the point I want to make. Anyway, this episode is found on Spotify and YouTube. I'm out.